Hey, this is Materi, and this is the sixth video in my um, sound design tutorial series thing. Um, this time, we'll be going over the effects, the voicing tab, and this oscillator tab. Um, I'll first start off with this oscillator tab, because uh, maybe I should start off with the voicing tab. Uh, the voicing tab and the oscillator tab kind of go together. So, let's say we do a new sound. It sounds flat and boring. Um, you can see right here in our voicing section, there's a max and there's a unisono, which is unison. I don't know why it's called unisono. Maybe it's Spanish or something. Uh, max means the max amount of keys that can be played at once. So if I bring this down to one and I try to play two, It doesn't let me. I'm pressing them at the same time. It's only choosing one or the other. So usually at 16, it's pretty good. I never really change it, but you could find a use for changing it. Now we have unisono, and that is the amount of voices playing at once. So I have one voice playing when I hit one key. If I go up to four, that means it's going to do the same thing only four times. And you can hear how it kind of phases out and how it sounds weird, but it's four different sounds just played at once. <clears throat> now we have this polyphon, monophon, and monorotate. And what they are is just a uh, polyphonic means you can play chords. Ah! 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 So yeah, you can play chords and polyphonic. Monophonic means you can only play one note at a time. I was just playing the same chords and it only chooses one. Mono rotate, same thing. Yeah, so I usually just choose monophonic. Now this trigger box says always legato and legato chiller. Um, this is where it actually corresponds with the glide section. So trigger, it just means if it's always going to, what, portamento between two notes, which means glide between two notes. So if it's on always and monophonic, it will always do a glide between each note, even if I stop playing. So here's two notes played right after each other. So I'm going to hold S and then like I'm going to hold the note and then play another one while holding a note and then let go of the one that I put on after while holding the same note. So I'm holding the note that I was originally holding and it doesn't do anything. But um <clears throat> why you would choose always is like if you're doing something where it's like a melody but there's gaps in between each note and you want it to slide between each note. So I'll press one and then I'll play the next one. You'll hear it glide to the next one, even though there was this like break in between. So you could hear it glide between each note. Now legato is like that, only it's almost identical to always, only it doesn't um, slide between gaps. So I'm going to hold one, play the next one, and then let go of the next one while holding the first one. And it'll stop playing altogether. You'll see. So <clears throat> that's one thing about Legato Triller. And also, let's say I'm playing a melody. So legato and always, I just compared them. Now legato triller is legato, only you can do trills, which is switching, like holding one note and then playing another. 
So that's really nice, but again, it doesn't glide between notes if you have a gap. And so we'll go into the oscillator tab real quick just so I can show you the glide. There are these two different modes for um, glide. You have equal, which means the, uh, the time that it takes to glide between each notes will be the same no matter what the note. Um, rate <clears throat> is different um, based on how far the note is from each other. It'll take more time to um, glide between notes. So a note that's right next to a note will take a short amount of time, and a note far away from a note will take a longer amount of time. So I'll show you right now. So that's pretty nice. Um, you have this time knob, which is how long it takes to glide between each note. In this oscillator tab while I'm here, I may as well go over pitch bend. Pitch bend is something that's handled either on your keyboard if you have a pitch bend um, knob thing, or on your um, DAW if you have pitch bend automation. So let's say I set my pitch bend to one octave higher on the up and one octave lower on the bottom. So now I'll just put, like, make a note real quick. And now in Ableton, how to get the uh, envelope pitch bend is you just, you make a MIDI note or any um, note, any um, arrangement clip thing. You click on it, and over here, you have this E down here. You click on it, and you set this to pitch bend. Then you could either draw it in using this, which I, I like to do, or you can draw them, draw in each node by double clicking and then dragging. Damn, I hate that. And so the pitch bend, if I do this instead, might be a little easier. So that's what a pitch bend does. Now back to massive. And you can change the range, of course. Double click it, bring it back to zero. Um, now let's go, oh, let's talk about vibrato. So vibrato, if you do a new sound, like if you click new sound, when you open massive. So like if we delete this and we bring in massive, it doesn't start with the initialized patch taking a while but if you go to file click new sound it gives you initialized pass patch with the uh, vibrato knob already set up and in here let's say if I clear macro it's not doing what I said oh whoops clear so now I have this rate knob and this depth depth knob so the depth knob is like how intense the vibrato will be. And the rate knob is how fast it will be. I usually like the uh, default one. So I just initialize patch always when I start making patches and usually keep that there. <clears throat> so now back to our voicing tab. Um, <clears throat> none of this unisono spread stuff works if it's only on one. So you set it to at least two or up to like 16. I'm pretty sure you could do more if your voices is more. Kind of kills your CPU. Let's just bring this down. Ugh. So I'll bring it up to four. And now we have 
um, pitch cutoff, which we could just turn on by turning on, and these values over here, a little automation thing, which automates this slider between two values, and <clears throat> the slider, which goes between two values. So if it's all the way off, you hear nothing, but we can turn that up and it'll actually it actually changes every four of the sounds like every vo four voices that we have on here uh, it's, hard. it's weird to explain right now so like there are eight voices and it will detune each of them from each other some cool 80 cents from it. Uh, you can put this, um, these values up or down. So it's pretty cool, uh, this detune thing. I usually just uh, set it so that it's at zero and then I just bring it up to like 10 or something. And usually that's a good point to just drag it all the way. And again, you can put like an LFO in this box to automate. So if you wanted to. tab so that's what that does now we have a wavetable position which will change this knob pretty much for your sound so let's say very distinguishable modern talking which has a good range for explaining this so every eight every like signal sent will have a different wave table position based on this uh, value. So, so it's like having eight different os oscillators with different wave table uh, positions um, for modern talking, essentially. Um, now we have this pan position, which is the best one by far. So we turn it on. And right now it's set to, I just double clicked it to set it back to the middle, which is, which is called mono. And for good reason, because when you move it, it just, it's not mono anymore. So it, it just like pans out each individual um, uh, voice. So if you hear like a very wide sound um, in a song, you can almost be certain it is because of this um, pan position or one of the effects, which I'll go into right now. So effects in Massive, uh, it's really important to note, I think I've said this before, um, effects one has the most effects, effects two um, it's lacking the distortion effects. So that's just something to know. If you're doing effects and you want distortion in your sound, make sure that you have effects one set to one of these classic tube, tele tube, or um, Bronner tube. So all these effects are pretty good. They're actually, it's nice to have these effects in massive. You can actually get really cool sounds out of them. So I'll just initialize this and I'll turn the reverb on which is a really big reverb and already we have a pretty cool sound um, for a lead the reverb adds like uh, it kind of widens it a little bit but it makes it feel really big too and distant it's weird um, small reverb is really nice for uh, widening the sound, making it a little bit beefier. You can see it has like a 
different effect than the big reverb. But it's nice in its own way. Um, to go over what color does is um, the reverb. Uh, the reverb will allow it will like uh, allow certain frequencies to get reverberated more than others. The color is what allows that. So if your color is all the way up, more of the highs will get reverb as opposed to when it's all the way down when more of the mid range and lowers get reverbed. So you can see how different of a sound that actually has. Our dry wet is on every every single effect. It just determines how much of the dry signal gets passed and how much of the affected signal gets passed. So if our dry wet's all the way up, that means um, that means only the affected sound will um, show through. But if it's all the way down, that means only our dry signal will get sent through without any of the effects. With reverb, it's really nice to have it somewhere in between. Because you really want that uh, dry signal to shine out more than anything else, unless it's a sound design where it's supposed to be really uh, far in the background, like if you're making like a space sound type thing. Um, all these parameters are the same with the small reverb. Then you have all these flanger, positive, negative, mono, negative, mono, whatever. Flanger is just like, if you think of a guitar and you think of like Jimi Hendrix or Pink Floyd, it's kind of like that. It's just a pretty cool effect. Both flanger and chorus and phaser are pretty normal effects if you're a musician. It's just play around with them, you'll understand what they do. I always thought like uh, when I played guitar or when I play guitar, I always feel like flanger makes me feel like I'm like flying around kind of. So if I'm making a sound that somewhat resembles something like an airplane or a metallic -y airplane type thing, I tend to use a flanger. <clears throat> and you can hear the rate kind of is like an LFO rate. Feedback. That is why I always assume it's like flying or like alien-y type sound. Uh, depth. pretty cool <clears throat> so all the flangers are kind of like that you have the mono flanger which uh, only it doesn't sound as wide so I'll do that and then I'll do the normal one you could hear how wide the normal one sounds compared to the mono one obviously <clears throat> uh, chorus the way I see it, I never really understood it, but um, I feel like it's giving like a vibrato underneath. Uh, it's kind of like adding another voice and then it is just like giving a vibrato to that voice. Yeah, it's like a vibrato with a delay on it. And the offset is the time for that delay. The depth is um, how much... It's kind of like the dry wet, only it, it's more of how much the effect actually has. So if you want a lot of vibrato... It's like um, the vibrato thing. Chorus mono, same thing. Only, obviously, not as wide. Chorus ensemble. Ah, 
I guess I turned it off. This one is the one that I use the most. It really widens, widens like your sound. While also giving it like a dancey feel. Um, phaser is another one of those like uh, Jimi Hendrix style effects. Oops. So just like the uh, flanger, or was it the flanger? Yeah, just like the flanger, it has the same knobs that do essentially the same thing. So delay. Um, we went over this over in the insert, so if you didn't watch it, you should go watch it. But um, this one's a little bit more involved, I suppose. You actually have control of the right and left uh, time, like when it actually plays. So. If I put the dry wet all the way up. The damp is all the way up. Which is another like dry wet type thing. Um, delay is really nice uh, for as, like kind of widening it. It's like a false sense of widening. If you ever like listen to uh, people who sing, sometimes they use a delay or sometimes they just record over. But if they don't have time to record over um, the same exact thing, you can use the delay to like widen it and then you pan each one far right and far left, which is what this delay does. <laughs> It duplicates the signal and then you can offset them by a certain amount of time. Uh, the delayed sync is almost like the uh, delay, only you can actually do it. It's synced this time. So. You have a little bit more control. Um, the feedback thing, which wasn't in the original delay, was it? No. So the feedback knob, it actually allows you to, um, like if you click it, it'll, if your feedback is all the way up, it'll play like the same thing only again and again. So like, da, da, da. And the lower the feedback is, the less it will do that. Uh, that was a horrible explanation. Uh, dimension Expander, by far the most important effect in my opinion. It's kind of like a delay, only it's a lot simpler. You have a wet dry and you have a size. So think of it like a delay, but you have a size knob instead of a time knob. One thing that's good about this is if you if you have a sound that you really like, like I'll just throw something together real quick. Okay. So that's just something, and one thing is like if you use unisono or stuff, like if you use this, it can really change your sound. Like if you have a really cool sound and it's only on one voice to start with and you change it and it completely changes your sound, um, you could use Dimension Expander to kind of act like a pan position to widen your sound. So here's dimension expander now so without it and then I have it just set so I double click on dry wet then bring the size literally all the way down
and you can see it really widens up the sound and if the sound was better to start with it would make it sound like 20 times better um, now these tube effects are all the same they just add distortion but you can only have one at a time so like tell you They each have their own characteristics, so you can really get into that. Now I'm just playing around, just cause, why not? And you can see now I'm going to show you the dimension expander trick. You can see we don't have any of the uh, the ah I can't even talk any of the distortion, goddamn uh, effects on effects two. So I usually leave the distortion to effects one and the dimension expander to effects two. You can see how it adds width. So it's really nice. And you also have this EQ, just a three band EQ, or a two, yeah, like a three band EQ. You have one um, bell right here, so you change the frequency and then you can boost it. And then you have like a low shelf, which is just gonna change all the lows or all the highs on the high shelf. So that was the sixth tutorial. I hope that, yep, sixth tutorial. And next time, what am I going to be going over? I will be going over some sound design thing. So hopefully we'll be making sound soon as opposed to just um, going over what everything does in Massive. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch the next one. That's when all the fun stuff's going to actually happen. And everything you've learned will actually be used to make a sound. So... Again, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, goodbye.